Now back on the EMP issue. This is what you're looking at if you have a big EMP device or super EMP device. This is the affected area. So that's probably about two-thirds of the population of the United States. It means instant collapse of the government, instant collapse of the stock market, instant collapse in, in most of these nuclear power plants within that zone, which is most of the plants in the United States, will probably experience Fukushima-like meltdown. Um, in 1960, oh, I think I have that up there, but we'll go on to the next one. What to expect. Okay, here's what to expect. This is out of the official EMP report. And the guy who was the commissioner is Will, Dr. William Graham. I keep wanting to call him Dr. You know, Billy Graham, but that's a different guy. He, um, he was Ronald Reagan's chief science advisor. So he's not a left-wing radical in any way, shape, or form. And um, so in the report, this is based on actual EMP simulation studies. They've got like huge EMP simulators. They put a bunch of electrical stuff out there. So they're saying 10 to 15 percent of the cars on the road will be instantly disabled. Most of the cars that are sitting in the drive will still work. It turns out that cars are relatively robust as far as EMP is concerned because they're insulated Faraday cages. They're metal boxes. They're insulated from the ground, and there's sparky things going on in cars all the time. So they, you will find a lot of electronic anomalies and stuff. So the thing about, like, I've got to go out and get a 1970s car, pre-electronic ignition, pre-microelectronics, they will be much more robust against EMP. There's no question. But the cars are probably your least concern in an EMP. Uh, you know, I mean, it's something to consider. If you got the mucks, bucks and money and you want to go out and get an old clunker that's all carbureted in, in pre-electronic ignition, not a bad idea. But you know, you got to juggle your priorities. And I'm saying the, there'd be a lot more bigger worries. Massive grid failures, one to three year delivery. Here's the real big problem too on top of this. In the EMP simulation tests, most of, most of the stuff, like your, your iPhones and iPods and your little radios, especially if they're not turned on at the time, are probably going to survive. Not necessarily, but probably. But the digital electronics is far more sensitive to EMP than the old-fashioned electronics because you have the traces are just like, you know, mil mic micrometers apart. And so the digital electronics is very susceptible. And the more wires and things are interconnecting the digital electronics, the more that acts as antennas and fries and stuff. Are we out of time? I, no, we're not. I need to uh, ask you the, the last five minutes before you quit and we eat. I'd like to just briefly. Yeah? Okay. Briefly what? Talk about these. Whatever that is. Okay. 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 I, you know, this is bioremediation. This one is. Oh. This is Rishi. I, I do pharmaceutical mushrooms for my seals. These are the foods we eat to take bullshit out of our bodies and yep. or eliminate cancer. And well, another I one that's. Another one that's really good is mo I take motophyllin every day, which is a, a juice-dried extract of kelp that was developed in the Soviet Union to bioremediate the Chernobyl survivors. And it's M-O-D-I-F-I-L-A-N.com, motophyllin, but motophyllin.com. Lots of science behind it, lots of studies. This is not woo-woo. This is real. It chelates to heavy metals, dumps leads, dumps arsenics, dumps strontium, dumps cesium, you know, dumps the really na uranium out of your body, and it provides you with really great trace minerals and bioavailable iodine. So it's actually probably much better than potassium iodide in terms of thyroid and, and stuff. So if you're thinking, I mean, I have potassium iodide in my go bag kit, and if there's a real bad nuclear thing, I'll probably take it, but I'm really much more concerned with stocking up tons of motophyllin than I am potassium iodide. M-O-D-I-F-I-L-A-N, Modifilen. And Sergey, who was from the Soviet Union, it's his bag, and he worked and developed it there and emigrated to the United States, lives outside of San Diego, and he's a good guy. Okay, so here's a real big problem, is these, all of this stuff that controls the infrastructure of our modern society, that's going to cook 100%. Pretty much every complex digital control system that runs our factories, our communication systems, our nuclear power plants, our refineries. This is not solar storm. This is EMP. Solar storm does not fry that stuff. Solar storm is the long, slow burn that cooks the grid. EMP is 
the fast, sparky stuff that cooks the microelectronics. So and photovoltaic, systems also? photovoltaic systems are questionable. I'd like to get an answer from somebody who really knows and tests on that. In fact, I know the guy who does a test. I've got to call him up and ask him. Because photovoltaic systems, I would, I would guess that your inverters are highly susceptible and that it would be a good idea to stock, if you have the spare money, to stock a backup inverter in, in, a, in a Faraday cage. And you may cook, if you have some microchip switches, my guess is that the panels themselves are quite robust from EMP. That's my, my, I could be wrong, but my guess is the panels themselves are quite robust and will survive EMP. But your inverter systems will not. And um, that, that's my guess, but I'd, I'd like to talk to someone who knows and has actually done the test. And I know the guy, it's tall, I just haven't thought about calling him before on that. So he's the guy who invented the vacuum tube switches to protect the grid, or his company did. And he's a really sharp guy, and he's got the largest EMP testing facility in the world that does lots of stuff for the DOD. So the guy really knows his, in the words of, uh, well, how many kids are he? He really knows his shit, whatever. <laughs> Um, okay, so the critical infrastructure stuff that runs our world, really, really fried. Basically, 100% failure in those systems. Fuel delivery, dispensing systems, refrigeration, food, communication systems. Everything in our world runs just in time. It's all controlled on the Internet. So in an EMP zone, all that stuff instantaneously fried.